Michael Van Runkle here for HotCars.com. I'm here in Pasadena, California, and I'm sitting in a Mercedes-Benz EQS 450 Plus. This is a big, luxurious, all-electric sedan from Mercedes, and I'm going to take it for a quick test drive, drive it on the freeway, head up to the Angeles Crest, and see how something this large actually handles in the hills a little bit, and then drive it through some city driving at stop-and-go traffic. In the meantime, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Thanks. I'm fresh off driving an Audi RS e-tron GT, which is lower, totter, smaller, and got almost twice as much power. This thing has 329 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. So let's see how it does flooring it on this on-ramp. Now that's fast, but it's not nearly as fast as what you would expect from a high-end Tesla with the dual motor system or the Taycan and Audi RS e-tron GT. This thing is rear drive only, and it's the lower spec. There is like an AMG version with more power and all-wheel drive. This one, however, does 350 miles of range, which is really in competition with Tesla and sort of the lower end Lucid, I guess. This car costs $103,000 to start, and then the AMG one costs a lot more. But the purpose from Mercedes of unveiling the EQS, which is a 2022 model year, is more for sort of luxury cruising. It's not for that sporty EV vibe that Porsche and Audi and sort of the high-spec Tesla Model S Plaid is going for. This has so much room. I'm six foot one, you can see I've got a, a good amount of headroom here. The seat's all the way down, but it's not nearly all the way back. We've got these little cushions here just for the COVID precautions. But the impressive part to me is I set up my seat and then I went and sat in the back. Tons of leg room. I got in the Audi RS e-tron GT, did the exact same thing and felt super cramped. Now the seats here in the back are a little upright and we've got sort of that semi sort of sport back coupe roof line that basically everyone is doing these days because it gives such aerodynamic benefits. And this is a true hatchback. So you can open it up and the roof, as you can see here, is above the rear seats entirely. We've also got huge panoramic sunroofs. And of course, it's impossible not to talk about this enormous touchscreen dash, which is absolutely ludicrous. This is the future of automotive interior design, infotainment, dash control gauges. I don't even know what's going on over there. And I'm not even gonna have anything close to enough time to check out what it can all do. Right now, I've just got the nav going. You can see I'm headed up towards the Angeles Press here on the freeway. And the ride is super smooth so far. I've got it in max regen, so if I take my foot off the brake, it does slow down for you which I really like. It's kind of my thing with electric cars. I want that one pedal driving. The interior is also super nice textures. We've got what feels like a synthetic leather steering wheel, but it's pretty nice. It's not Alcantara though. This is sort of a fake suede. I do not like suede. It, I do not like Alcantara. It gives me the willies, but that would only be applicable if I had a more sensitive elbow. I'm really appreciating the whole interior design. I like these sort of turbine, AC vents, which are doing a moderate job keeping me cool, and I'm sure I could turn the fan up a little bit here. This huge touch screen is pretty nice, would take a little bit of getting used to. Again, I've only got this car for a few minutes, so I'm not going to be able to go through every little feature here. We've got this little glow line on the smooth water line of the dash that comes around. You've got the classic Mercedes Benz seat adjusters on the door, which you know, okay, I guess that's cool, but it's not that cool. One funny little detail that I do know about this car, but I'm not, again, gonna have a chance to check out is, I believe that it has scents, as in smells. It will create artificial odors to improve the ambiance of your driving experience. The automakers have realized that the only way to really differentiate these cars other than styling is with these creature comforts like the huge dash and apparently all the way down to your olfactory sense of smell. The wheels and tires on this thing are 20 inch wheels. They're wearing 255 rubber and it's square all around. Again, that's helping to create sort of a softer ride 
than some of the other EVs I've driven, which go with the biggest wheels possible, low profile tires and really wide tires to help put all that torque to the ground immediately and not just burn out. This thing doesn't have quite so much power, but having narrower tires make for a quieter ride. They're more aerodynamic and they're a little softer. But here we are up in the corners. The Angelus Christ is starting to have some turns. We're off the freeway and this thing definitely has a lot more body roll than say a Tesla Model 3 or Model S or an Audi RS e-tron GT like the one I just drove. Then again, it's taller and more comfortable. So that's just a trade-off you have to make. Is anybody really buying an EV for a hardcore track monster? No, because how many laps are you gonna get in before you've killed your battery? It's a legitimate question. Probably you'd want a gas vehicle for that. This is sort of for the true purpose of an EV, which is why the Tesla Model X and Model S and Model Y are sort of larger and more comfortable like this Mercedes EQS. It's got a really good turning radius you just saw at that U-turn because this does have four wheel steering. You can sort of feel it kick in as you're turning and this probably comes more in handy in town, but this is a large vehicle and that four wheel steering, you sort of turn the steering wheel and you have normal steering and then you feel it go, woo, and it changes the weight a little bit. So it's not as refined as I would maybe expect from a $100,000 electric sedan from Mercedes-Benz, which is all about prioritizing the luxurious feel and predictable driving dynamics, but it'll probably help keep that turning radius down on such a big vehicle. Heading back downhill, it's sort of a hassle to keep my foot on the gas, even though the accelerator pedal in this car is very nice. It's got a very linear travel motion to go with your power delivery. But as I'm going downhill and I want to be sort of engine braking rather than keeping my foot on, I can change the regen or what Mercedes calls recuperation by using these paddle shifters on the steering wheel, which is sort of something that I've seen in a number of different EVs now. And I always thought it was a gimmick. And this is the first time that I've really liked it. And in fact, now I've got no recuperation on at all and we're just cruising down the hill quite nicely. And then I can turn it on. It's like a downshift, you would call it maybe. It says minus on the paddle shifter, but shouldn't it be plus because there's more regen or recuperation? Now it's getting a little steeper. I've got increased recuperation and now it's gonna bring me to a full stop. So I gotta keep going. Now I'm not usually a big fan of massive panoramic sunroofs like this. They tend to let the cabin heat up a little too much and then you worry about getting sun in your eyes and you worry about sun entering the cabin just when the car is parked normally. So that's an important consideration when it comes to aging. But then again, this is an EV. Let's be honest, no one's buying these things. They're just leasing them because they don't want to have them for more than three or five years before the batteries need to be replaced or they start worrying about electric vehicle reliability. Pulling onto the freeway, again, you've just got plenty of power. But now the sun is in my eyes because of this panoramic sunroof. I don't know how to close the shade, so we're just gonna deal with it. Oh, it's a touch function. You just slide your finger along this little touchpad here and it closes that. That's nice. Now the glare is out of my eye. I really appreciate it. This is just a mesh thing, but it helps. It's not a fully solid sunroof sort of visor. Some things to talk about are sort of the touch functions of the non-touch screen area. The steering wheel controls are sort of that sensitive plastic, piano black plastic material that feels a little cheap in a $100,000 car. Same for the mirror controls over here. And they sort of like, depress slightly and then go click, but it's just one smooth surface. It's not an actual button. I'm not really a big fan of that at all. I do, however, appreciate that we do still have buttons on the steering wheel and for controlling some of the more physical functions. Whereas Tesla has everything going on in the center screen down to adjusting the rear view mirrors. You have to select that in the large center screen and then use the little balls on the steering wheel. Now we're coming up on some city streets as I go back to return this vehicle because I've only got 30 minutes in it. These are a little bit bumpy roads here in Pasadena and I'm gonna be curious to see how this EQS handles it. So far it has been very smooth and quiet, which is kind of the point of, again, a family hauler with enough space and all electric power. It's just a smooth ride. You have very linear pedal travel for power delivery, which is sort of a concern with the really powerful EVs. You just end up sort of punching it by accident. And that's probably something you get used to if you live with one. But with this one, I feel like 
I'm already sort of unconsciously being conscious of saving battery and that long pedal travel actually contributes to that. Now I just came to a stop and I had turned off the regen coming down the hill on the Angeles Crest and I was like, why isn't it breaking? And then I had to push the brake harder than expected. That's just, again, you gotta keep track of what settings you're in. Now I'm in e increased recuperation again for city driving and it's gonna stop for me. Here we go, I'm gonna do the regen. And it sort of starts with the regen and then gets stronger. So you might come up short until you really get used to it. There we go, nailed it with just a little bit of practice there. I really, I really like regen, I can't say it enough. It is one of those things you have to get used to and I kind of dig that Mercedes is doing it. So you really modulate how much you're lifting off of the accelerator pedal. Do we call it a throttle pedal? I don't know, there's no throttle in this car. You got plenty of power here in the city. It's, there's, there's no concerns with that. I don't think you need to step up to the AMG version and pay a lot more just if you want more power. Now, if you want all wheel drive traction, if you live in somewhere with bad weather and you're gonna be facing rain and snow a lot, that's another thing because all of these electric cars with so much torque in the rain, unless they have really good traction control systems, they may end up just spinning out. That's a concern when you've got the narrower tires that are 255 on this car. I'm really getting used to the regen in this car and I really like it. The ride is super smooth. The interior is pretty nice, although not perfect. And I think Mercedes has probably nailed it. The question will be whether enough customers are gonna be okay with the sort of bulbous, fish-like, whale-like exterior styling and whether that $100,000 plus price point is going to be sort of a detriment as more EVs come to the market. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, getting a chance to see more of the Mercedes-Benz EQS. Thanks again for watching, and as always, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Thanks.